Hey guys, this is John from OurHomeFromScratch.com. This is the next video in our custom media cabinet build. In this video, we're covering a lot of material. So, let's get started. This is the cabinet we're building. Just to recap, it's a TV stand. It's going to sit in our master bedroom. Very simple design, white, shaker doors, some couple shelves. This is the box cabinet. This is what we're going to start building. So it's a couple sides, a bottom, a couple dividers, and a back strap that will hold it all together. Okay, so... In the last few series, we, we cut all the plywood out and we added our grooves and dados. In this video, we're going to start by adding the shelf pins. So, so these cabinets are going to have shelves in them, so they need to rest on some, some shelf pins, and this is how I, I go about adding those. First thing I do is I take a piece of scrap wood, I put it in the groove, and actually that scrap wood would be great if I wanted to spray paint this. Next, I'm going to take... Uh, this Rockler shelf pin jig. Okay, you can buy this on rockler.com and it comes with a handy dandy drill bit that goes in your drill that works with this system. So you basically hold it against the edge of whatever you want to add the shelf pin to. Uh, the shelf pins I also bought on Rockler. You can buy these at your local hardware store. They're quarter inch shelf pins. And um, you'll need one, of, you need actually some of those to do this, but uh, you'll need them for the end of the cabinet. Anyway, so I'm going to hold the jig against the edge of the cabinet and I'm going to actually be drilling through some preset holes in this jig. And what this jig does is it spaces them out. I'm using every other hole here. You can do every hole on this thing if you wanted to. And it gives you perfectly spaced, perfectly sized, and uh, the appropriate depth of, for those shelf pins. So, um, and for longer, longer pieces here, what you can do is you can actually slide it up and keep drilling. So, um, I'm going to do this on, on both sides, on every piece, the both sides and the dividers will have shelf pin holes and this is how I do them. So as I was saying that piece of scrap I put in there, if you want to spray paint these you got to keep those grooves free of paint for your glue so I'll be using those scrap pieces again later on. So there's my shelf pins. I'm going to put it on the side and repeat that process. But you get the idea here. Now for the dividers to get the shelf pins, same thing, the divider will go on the bottom. Uh, I can't do the divider alone. So the divider actually needs to sit in the bottom so I get the spacing right, right? So the, so the side shelf pin jig was off where the bottom met it. See how this works? So the divider needs to rest against the same piece essentially. So I, the easiest thing to do here is just put it in the piece and then clamp it on. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I'm not going to show this again. Okay, so let's get to the sanding. I sand all the pieces I made with all the pieces in this cabinet with 110 or 100 grit sandpaper. I'm using a random orbital sander because uh, it's easy. For any of the, all the joints in the face frame and the doors where I actually have some joinery, um, I'm making sure that those joints are nice and flat and flush. I'm only sanding the flat faces here, so um, the, the, the edges I'll go over later, but the sides and the ends will get sanded as well as the flat faces in the center section here too for everything. All the pieces get sanded with 110 or 100 and then 220. Okay, so now for the edges, don't go over the edges with the random orbital sander. You just want to take a block piece of wood, maybe with some 100 grit sandpaper, and we're just going to rub, make one pass on those edges. We want to knock the edge down, but we don't want to round them over. Okay, so that knocking the edge down will help the paint or the stain or whatever you're using adhere. If you don't do this, it'll flake off very easy. It won't hold up. Uh, okay, so let's get to some painting. I think the best paint is spray paint. If you don't feel like spray painting is too cold, uh, you can just use regular paint. Whatever. I'm using regular old uh, semi-gloss latex paint here because it's going to match our trim. I'm going to do two coats of paints on the interior parts and then the doors and face frame will actually get two coats of primer spray paint and then I'm going to brush on the latex semi-gloss here and that's what I'm going to do here now. For the doors and the face frame, I want the brush patterns, the strokes to go in the direction of the wood. So I'm going to go along the length of each board and um, I want to make sure that there's some definition so where one board ends and the next one begins, I want the brush marks to match that. You can also use a roller in the center section of these doors and then brush them out flat to take out the, the roller look to it. Okay, so you can see that I'm changing directions here with that stroke there. It's pretty simple. All right, now that all our pieces are painted, you can see they basically look like uh, I bought them at Ikea at this point. They've got grooves, they've got shelf pins, so we're ready to assemble these. So 
this is what makes, this is why I love doing grooves and dados, because it makes this part so much easier. So I'm just going to put some wood glue in this dado here, this groove I made. All right, and uh, I'm using just regular wood glue. Uh, if you're going to, if this is going to be outside furniture, you'd have to use like a type two or something else, but this is regular plain old wood glue. So I'm going to put a nice big bead of wood glue in there. I'm going to stand this on the edge and I'm going to intersect the bottom piece into that. All right, this is going to go right into that groove and I'm going to flush up the front edge. I want to make sure the edges are nice and flush there. All right. All right. Now, to make things easier, because I'm going to be moving these pieces around, um, I'm going to tack, using a brad nail, I'm going to tack nail the pieces together. First, I'm going to make sure that they're square together. I don't want to put them in some weird angle and do that. Uh, and I'm using a three-quarter inch long brad nail. I'm just going to hit a couple from the bottom. You know, you're not going to see them from the bottom, because again, this is under the cabinet. I want all my nail marks, any fasteners I'm using this system, I want to be hidden. I don't want it to be obvious I, I used any nails in this at all. Here's the back strap. I have to already paint it as well, just to see what, looks, what that looks like. You can see it has a couple pocket screws in the end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little glue on the end of that, tack it in place once with one nail, and then I'm going to pocket screw it together. And here's the rear view. You can see the back strap from behind. This is the rear view of the cabinet. And I'm going to use a couple pocket screws to, to set that in. And I'm, again, I've, I've held it in place with a, uh, actually an inch and a quarter long brad, brad nail with a nail gun. So. I'm going to be putting my dividers in. I want to screw the dividers in. They're going to sit in those grooves. But the first thing I'm going to do is to make my uh, fastener easier. I'm drilling a couple holes in each of those grooves so I can locate them. It makes it much easier. OK, so now that I have my, my holes drilled, I got two of them. I want two screws in each divider, let's just say. You can do one, three, whatever you want. I'm going to put some glue in those grooves. I'm going to put my dividers in those grooves with the glue. And then I'm going to flip the piece over and I'm going to screw, I'm going to add a couple screws from the bottom. So there's the bottom view. I know where my holes are because I already drilled those holes, right? Now I'm going to put a screw in. I'm used to using a regular one and a quarter inch drywall screw. It's coming in from the bottom there. All right, now the dividers are, are secure from the bottom. All right, now to make sure they're square with the back plate, I'm going to use a uh, speed square. I'm going to square it up to the back strap. I'm going to hold it in place with my hand, and then I'm going to tack it in place with a brad nail. All right, and then I'm going to put another screw in from the, from the rear there. All right. So there's our cabinet. We just showed you that 3D drawing. That's what it looks like. Now it's time to attach the, fa attach the face frame. So I'm going to be adding wood glue to the front edge of the sides, the bottom, and the divider. All right, then I'm going to be putting the face frame right up to the cabinet. And I'm going to attach the cabinet to the face frame using two very inconspicuous pocket screws, one on each, uh, two on the sides, okay, so one on the bottom and one on the top, and you, you won't be able to see them because the, the one on the bottom will be hidden by uh, some baseboard molding that we're going to wrap, and the top one is going to be so high up in the cabinet, you'd really have to stick your head in the cabinet to see it. I'm going to tack the bottom pieces, uh, the bottom corners in place, and then I'm going to drive that pocket screw in there that'll hold the face frame to the cabinet. And again, look where that is. You're not going to be able to see that. So with the face frame attached, I'm also going to hold the dividers in the face frame in the bottom with some clamps, and I'm going to throw on my countertop. Regular piece of plywood, I added a piece of pl uh, poplar to the edge to make it look thicker, and that's just going to get flushed to the back. Uh, I'm going to put a big bead of wood glue all over the top of that cabinet so the counter sits on there. And I'm going to hold it in place with pocket screws in the back strap and on the inside face of the face frame. And then that countertop isn't going anywhere. So that's it. That's how I built this cabinet. Uh, head over to ourhomefromscratch.com. In the next video, we're going to show you how we put the doors on and install it. Thanks for watching.